coming up on The Extra Point, we will see how a WKU quarterback is seeking new opportunities. And we'll also talk about Hilltopper sports traditions from our Twitter. Extra Point. Hey guys, welcome back to the Extra Point. I'm Haley Schongard. I'm Blake Bethune. And obviously, we are not in the studios. We are recording from our homes. I'm live from Bowling Green. I'm live from Lexington, Kentucky. And as much as I wish we could be back in the studio, Blake, because it is such a bittersweet moment for the both of us, you know, this is my last Extra Point show as I'm a senior. Yeah, this is my um, first Extra Point show as a sophomore, and, you know, I'm really happy to be doing it with you because, you know, you know what you're doing, so. Oh, thank you. Yes, it is. It's just super sweet to be doing this virtually, kind of fun. It's very different from where we normally would be uh, back in the studio, but it's going to be a great show. I can already feel it. It's going to be a great show. It's going to be a memorable show. Yes, for sure. Quarterback Stephen Duncan intends to transfer for his final years of eligibility. Duncan started the first three games of the 2019 season for WKU football before being injured in a game against Louisville. Duncan was the most experienced quarterback for the Tops coming into the 2020 season. He will graduate from WKU in May and spend his two years of football eligibility elsewhere. WKU football will return to the Hill on September 5th against UT Chattanooga. WKU's highest paid coaches are volunteering salary cuts in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Athletic Director Todd Stewart, football coach Tyson Helton, and men's basketball coach Rick Stansbury will take a 10% pay cut. Stewart says the money saved will go back into the athletic department to soften the blow of decreased revenue. WKU President Dr. Timothy Caboni also volunteered for a 10% pay cut. As a result of the pandemic, the NCAA is considering cutting the minimum amount of university athletic teams from 16 to 14. WKU Track is welcoming an international runner to the team for the 2020 and 21 season. Casey Buchanan is an Australian runner known for his performance in the 800 meter run. Last year, Buchanan ran a 1 minute 50 second 800, making him one of the fastest recruits in Australia and in the U.S. Buchanan signed his national letter intent and is expected to hit the track with the tops this upcoming indoor season. Okay, Haley, now we're going to go over to the Twitterverse where Extra Point has been having polls as of late. And uh, one, of the poll here, one of the polls here is favorite WKU athlete. Me personally, I voted for Brandon Dowdy and, you know, he was just electric on the hill. Brought us some Conference USA championships, led the... FBS and passing yards a couple years, brought us to a top 25 ranking for the first time and only time in WKU history. And, you know, he went pro, so definitely a great athlete here for Western. What about, what about you? I mean, I could not agree with you more there with your choice of Brandon Dowdy. But for me, I had to go with my girl, Alyssa Kavanaugh. She actually tied for first with Courtney Lee in that poll. But I just could not vote for her. She obviously set the court on fire while she was here playing volleyball. But I feel like she truly just embodies the WKU spirit. You know, amazing on the court, but also amazing off the court. Recently, through her social media, I've been seeing she's been using her Arbonne business to get donations and put together little care packages that she's been giving to essential workers who have been fighting the coronavirus outbreak. And I just think that that is the absolute sweetest thing and shows that she not only is an amazing volleyball player, but also an amazing person inside. And so I just had to vote for her. It was an absolute no brainer for me. Um, another one of the questions I really liked, and I think this one is the absolute most important, is your favorite pre or post game place to eat. And for me, I just had to go with the DSU food court. Nothing will ever be a post game Chick-fil-A sandwich. Go into um, Diddle, go into Smith Stadium, and then walk it over to DSU to get a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Nothing will ever beat that. That just is how you end a WK, WKU game day right is with Chick-fil-A and DSU. What about you, Blake? I mean, you can't beat a chicken sandwich. I totally agree with you there. But I think something that can compete with the chicken sandwich is the uh, $5 tray of cookout. <laughs> That's what I voted for was cookout. Um, Cookout is just amazing <laughs> to me. 
I, nothing beats just going to a WKU game, then going to cookout and getting a tray and a milkshake. And um, yeah. And then another poll we had here, and this is definitely just a staple of Western because it's the logo. How many red towels do you own? Me personally, I only have two. So, you know, I'm looking to build that, but I'm only a sophomore. So, you know, we'll definitely get more towels and accumulate more towels over the years. But um, what about you, Haley? I feel like I have a ton of them over all around my house. You know, like you said, they are a staple of WKU and what we mean. You know, we show up, we wear red, as our um, president Cavoni says. And so I feel like as I've been starting to like clean out my things, as I'm getting ready to graduate, I've just been finding all of these red towels and they're just such an icon for WKU. So I voted in the five or more category and that was the winner for that poll. Um, that's all the time we have for Twitter polls. So make sure to follow Extra Point WKU on Twitter so you can participate in all the Twitter polls and be a part of the action for next week. Going for two or going for six? When we come back, we talk about the last dance. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. But now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome. We need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for 75 years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like, if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Roll over. Chance high five. All right. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... Fur. I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Here's to the things that can keep us safe. Those we use all the time with hardly a thought. Those that are silently standing by to save our lives. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere we go. Many mobile devices will now bring you wireless emergency alerts, real-time information directly from local sources you know and trust. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Alrighty, Blake, this is my favorite time in the show where we get to break free of our scripts and we get to go for two. And I feel like this going for two, it would be a crime if we did not talk about The Last Dance. Um, I have not seen it, but I know everyone, I feel like everyone else has. And I've seen a lot of controversy and mixed reviews on social media. And the one that stood out to me the most was Michael Jordan himself came out and said he was very nervous for the world to see this documentary as he was worried it was going to portray him as a bad person. I know you've seen the documentary so far, so what do you have to say? Do you think it actually portrayed him as a bad person or people were just taking um, his willingness to win the wrong way? Um, I think it portrays him as a good and bad person at certain points of the documentary. Like, you know, good a good moment that he had was that showed him as a, as a genuine good person was in 84 when he was a rookie and he got drafted. He hung out with his Bulls teammates in a hotel one time and they were just doing hard drugs and other stuff like that. And he said he walked out of the hotel room, didn't want anything to be a part of that. You know, and personally, I think that that just shows his will and determination to win, not have any outside distractions. But some bad moments are, you know, him having them showing him you know, openly bully the GM, which was Jerry Krause. But, you know, the whole Chicago Bulls team really didn't like Jerry Krause, but I don't think that really gives him an excuse to bully him. But, you know, it, you know, it's Michael. So Michael's going to be Michael at the end of the day. But um, Haley, I know that you have 
some some Chicago in your bloodline for sure. So, you know, when you watch The Last Dance, are you going to be watching from the perspective of a Chicago native or just, just witnessing the overall aura that is Michael Jordan? Yes, um, I will be watching it Saturday for everyone who is worried that I have not watched it. I promise I'll be catching up and then getting ready to watch episodes three and four on Sunday. But, you know, like you said, in my house, we are diehard Chicago fans. So I feel like part of me is going to have to watch it as um, a Chicago fan. But the other part of me is just going to be able to sit back and actually take in the greatness that is Michael Jordan. You know, my parents remember watching Michael Jordan live whenever um, they were in their early adulthood. And so I'm really excited to kind of experience that same experience they had. Well, in my early adulthood, as you and I both were not alive when he was, you know, conquering college basketball and the NBA. So I am really excited, but I think I'm going to be a little mix of both there. Um, Blake, one last question for you. What is the most iconic Michael Jordan moment you are excited to see portrayed throughout this documentary? Well, there's really just two moments that I'm looking for personally, and that would be you know, in the late 80s, early 90s, his battles with Bad Boy Pistons, because those were just iconic. And then um, in 98, when he hit the shot over Byron Russell in game six, which would be his last shot as a Chicago Bulls player. And, um, you know, Haley, the same question goes for you. What are some moments that you're looking for? Yes, I think the most iconic moment for me is going to be Michael's first championship win in 91. Obviously, it's very special to him because it is his first win but also I feel like it was a big turning moment in the NBA where Magic Johnson was kind of handing over that throne of king of the NBA to Michael you know shortly after that happened Magic Johnson did go on to retire and I think that this was Michael first coming onto the scene and establishing who he was and starting to make a real name for himself and so I'm really excited to see you know the game footage as well as kind of the behind the scenes of like what Michael was thinking interviews with his teammates things like that kind of putting us into that game, Michael's mindset, his teammates' mindset, everything like that. I'm really excited to see that play out. Me too. And um, that's all the time we have for today for the Extra Point. As, as always, it's up. And it's good. It's good.